Welcome to the Pediatric Review, where I help you prepare for your pediatric nursing exams. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website. Okay. We'll talk about com. pediatric neurological disorders. So the first one is cerebral palsy. This is an impaired movement and posture related to an abnormality in the extrapyramidal or pyramidal motor system. Signs and symptoms are irritability and crying, difficulty feeding, stiff and rigid muscle tone, persistent of, persistence of infant reflexes, so that moro or tonic neck will continue after six months when it should be gone after three or four. They'll have delayed milestones, abnormal posture, and even seizures. Our nursing interventions are PT, OT, and speech therapy, assess developmental age, they may need mobilizing devices, ensuring a safe environment with seizure precautions, and making sure to keep them upright after meals. Then we have head injury. So there are two types. So we have an open head injury. This is a fracture or penetration of the skull and a closed head injury. This is a blunt trauma. So this is like someone gets hit really hard and they have a bleed inside their brain, but it's not open. You can't see inside. If it was open where there's a fracture or like a hole in their skull, that would be an open head fracture. So closed, there's no opening, but we need to watch for intracranial pressure, right? Because if they have a brain bleed, the pressure inside their head is going to Signs and symptoms, so again, depends on the stage. So early signs, we're gonna see a change in level of consciousness is the earliest indicator of improvement or deterioration. Slight changes in vital signs can be seen. In an infant, they might be irritable with a high-pitched cry. Their, their fontanelles will be bulging. They'll have increased head circumference. You may see a McCuen sign, which is a cracked pot sound on the head. They might have a setting sun sign, which the sclerula in their eyes shows above the iris. They might have a dilated scalp veins. And in a child, you may see headache, nausea, vomiting, visual disturbances, and seizures. Late signs include significant decrease in the level of consciousness or coma, decorticate flexion or deseparate extension posture, and shine strokes respirations. Our nursing interventions are to immobilize the neck and spine after a head injury if spinal injury is suspected. Make sure they have a patent airway, giving them oxygen. Head and body should maintain midline, a calm, quiet environment with seizure precautions and keep them NPO. Watch for decreased responsiveness. Monitor for nose and ear drainage. We're looking for blood or clear fluid, which would indicate real spinal fluid. Monitor for an epidural hematoma, so one dilated non-reactive pupil. And drainage from the nose and ear needs to be tested for the presence of glucose. If positive for glucose, this indicates the leakage of cerebral spinal and then we have a brainstem injury. So signs and symptoms are deep and rapid respirations, bradycardia, wide pulse pressure, dilated and unequal pupils. So next we have hydrocephalus. So this is increased cerebral spinal fluid due to a tumor, hemorrhage, infection, or trauma, and it leads to head enlargement. Signs and symptoms in an infant are increased head circumference, McEwen sign, dilated scalp veins, setting sun eyes, bulging interior fontanelles, and in a child you'll see behavior changes, headaches on awakening, nausea, vomiting, ataxia, and nystagmus. Nursing interventions are surgical interventions of ventri Culoperitoneal, so cerebral spinal fluid accumulating shunt to the peritoneal cavity. So this is the shunt going from the head down to the stomach area or to the right atrium of the heart. Pre-op or monitoring eyes and nose, small frequent feedings, and then pre-op NPO. Post-op, we monitor vital signs and neuroscience, keep the child flat, monitor for signs of intracranial pressure. If this occurs, elevate the head of the bed 15 to 30 degrees, monitor head circumference, and monitor for infection, eyes, and O's. Then we have meningitis. This is an infection of the central nervous system. Signs and symptoms we'll see are fever, chills, headache, vomiting, diarrhea, poor feeding, or anorexia, nuchal rigidity, poor or a high shrill cry, 
altered level of consciousness, bulging fontanelles in the infant. You'll also see a positive Koenig sign, which is the inability to extend legs when thigh is flexed anteriorly at the hip, or a Brzezinski sign, which is neck, neck flexion caused, causes adduction and flexion movements of the lower extremities. We'll see muscle or joint pain, air drainage, or petechiae, or puperic rashes. Our nursing interventions are to have respiratory isolation precautions for at least 24 hours after antibiotics are initiated. Neuro and level of consciousness assessment, monitor for seizures and hearing loss, and assessing nutritional status in I's and O's. Then we have ADHD. This is a behavioral disorder characterized by inattention, overactivity, and impulsivity. These patients are easily distracted, fidgety, and have a poor attention span. Our nursing interventions are to provide the patient with information on medication, therapy, and school, and medication may be prescribed. Watch for possible weight loss, nervousness, tics, or insomnia. Then we have autism. This is a complex neurodevelopmental disorder that can range on a spectrum from mild to severe. Signs and symptoms are impaired social interaction, so lack of social play, lack of seeking comfort, impaired peer relationships, verbal impairment, so monotone speech, echilala, lack of imaginary play, intellectual deficit, altered behavior, so attachment to augmented self-injury, repetitive routines, or body movements. And nursing interventions are to determine the child's routines, habits, preferences, and how they like to communicate. And the safe in a safe environment is the priority. Then we have Ray's syndrome. So this is an acute encephalopathy that follows a viral illness or the administration of aspirin. Signs and symptoms are a viral illness four to seven days before the onset of symptoms, fever, nausea, and vomiting, and neurological deterioration and increased blood ammonia levels. Nursing interventions are to provide rest and decreased stimulation in the environment and assess neurostatus. Then we have neural tube defects. So these neural tubes fail to close that lead to a central nervous system deficit. They'll have sensory motor deficit, dislocated hips, club foot, or hydrocephalus. So there's a couple different types. So first we have spina bifida, oculata, which the spine fails to close in the lumbosacral area. The spinal cord is intact and usually not visible. Meninges are not exposed and neurological deficits usually are not present. Then we have spina bifida cystica, which protrusion of the spinal cord, meninges are both. Defect causes failure to close of the vertebrae and neural tube, leading to a sac-like protrusion in the lumbar area or sacral area. Then we have a meningocele, which is a protrusion, involves the meninges in a sac-like cyst that contains cerebral spinal fluid in the midline of the back. Neurological deficits usually are not present. Then we have a meningocele, which is a protrusion of the meninges, Cerebral spinal fluid, neural roots, and part of the spinal cord. The sac is covered by a thin membrane but is prone to rupture, and neuro deficits are evident. So signs and symptoms depends on the type and the spinal cord deficit, flaccid paralysis of the legs, altered bladder and bowel function, hip and joint deformities, and hydrocephalus. Nursing interventions are to evaluate the sac and measure the lesion, perform a neuro assessment, monitor for intracranial pressure, measure head circumference and assess for bulging fontanelles, protect the exposed sac, cover with a sterile moist dressing, change the sac dressing regularly, a septic technique and monitor for infection, assess for drainage, place the patient in the prone position and turn the head to the side for feedings and prep for surgery. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.